Hey, it's Minute Book Reports, and in this video, I want to talk about manipulation and maybe how we can avoid manipulation. And some of the things that I learned from reading Othello from William Shakespeare. There's a character in Othello named Iago who is not the bird from Aladdin, but he is a, a, a very sneaky and sly character. And basically, he wants to sort of get his revenge on Othello because he was passed up for a military position. And so he has this huge, huge plan and it's all based on jealousy. To me, manipulation is getting someone to feel what you want them to feel. And from there, their feelings will change the way that they act or behave. And, and so we see this in things like advertising, but we also see this in interpersonal relationships. And this story is very much about manipulation from Iago. He sort of has everyone controlled and, and, and he's really working on this master plan and he gets all the way to the end, he almost succeeds. But it, it, it's amazing to see how he manipulates others. The thing about manipulation is that it's not about lying. It's just about implying. So if someone were to outright lie to you, you could just dismiss that and it would be ignored. But when someone tells you a truth about yourself that may not necessarily always be true, but a truth that may happen in certain times, under certain circumstances, when those circumstances hit, it starts to get the person thinking, well, maybe I'm like that. Maybe that's how I'm perceived by the world. And that's where manipulation really takes place because a lot of it happens in the person's mind, in the, in the, in the target's mind. And we see that a lot in, in, in Othello. One of the things about manipulation that I notice is that it's not from a stranger. You know, sometimes we get like advertising and things like that, but, but really uh, on a very personal level, manipulation happens with people that we know or that we trust or that we're maybe familiar with. And, and this works in advertising where you may not necessarily know that, that, that product, but when you see that celebrity, when you see that, that athlete endorse it, you kind of like, oh, okay, I, I trust them. I know who they are. And, and you're more willing to, to accept whatever it is that they say as, as a truth. And, and even with people that we don't know, if we see them over and over and over again through different ads, we start to recognize them and then they become a figure that has authority in our life, in our society, and then we are more likely to, to do whatever it is that they want, whether it's to buy a product or, or, or think a certain way. Iago gets close to the people that he manipulates. He gets close to Othello, Rodrigo, Cassio, Desdemona, his wife, Emilia, all these people he gets so close to, and, and you would think, right, that he'd be really nervous, that he wouldn't want to get close, like he wants to manipulate sort of from behind the scenes. But this is the brilliance of, of Iago's character, is he gets really close, almost too close to these people for, 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 for them to, to, to really trust him. There are so many times when they refer to him as honest and noble Iago, and you're thinking to yourself, as the reader, you're like, well, no, he's, he's trying to get you but they don't even know it. And it's because they're so close. You know, it's like that Godfather saying, right? You keep, you know, your, your enemies closer to you because that's really where you can start to, to trick them. You can start to gain their trust and at the right time and you strike and they don't even know what happened. It's hard for people to sort of backtrack and figure out what happened because they think that they were the ones who thought of the idea. And that's, and that's the beauty of it, is that when someone is fully manipulated, they believe that it was their idea, but the person who was actually manipulating them was controlling them the entire time. One of the things that I really love as a literary device, as a storytelling device, is that Iago, he kind of breaks character. There's these moments where if you read the story, you'll notice that he addresses the actual audience. It, it, it sort of, italicized with a, a little thing called an aside where he's acting in a scene and he's sort of doing his thing and then the character leaves and he's all alone on stage and then he turns to the audience and he he, he talks to them you know he gets real close and, and and he explains what he's trying to do what he's trying to think and when he does that he's manipulating the audience we are being manipulated and i didn't even realize that until after the story because you, you grow to like Iago's character because he's able to sort of break that, that fourth wall. He's able to interact and he, he recognizes the audience is right there and he gets personal. He, he talks to the audience, he explains that when he's doing something bad, he turns to the audience and says, you know, you may think that I'm a villain, but actually my advice I'm giving these people is sound advice. It's good advice. It's advice a friend would give. Even though the advice he may be giving to these characters is good advice, 
His motivation is terrible. He tries to disarm us by addressing us, by, 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 by being close to us. And that is incredible. That level of manipulation, not just in the story itself, but to manipulate the audience by getting close to us, by breaking away from the story, and then talking to us as if we're a part of the story. And he's, he brings us in, he's like, you know, I, I wanna let you know what I'm thinking right now. Here's what's really going on in my mind. To the point where we almost think the story is about Iago and not about Othello and Desdemona. It's, it's about this, this villain, this bad guy. But he says, no, I'm, I'm not a villain. I'm, uh, uh, here is what's happening. Here's what I'm trying to do. And, and, and that's just amazing. That's incredible. That level of storytelling is good. So one of the things that I think people can take away from how to not be manipulated, because you can read Othello and really look at it and study it and be like, okay, this is how to manipulate people. And, and I hope that people don't do that. I mean, we, I think manipulation is one of those things that we are sort of inherently born with, right? Even as, as infants, we, we cry, we want something, people come to us, we get what we want, right? And, and it starts maybe from that level. But I, I'm hoping that we can take things away from the story to maybe prevent us from becoming more manipulated. There's sort of safeguards that we can do to protect ourselves. And, and one of the things that I noticed was this idea of overcompensation, where Iago would often sort of overbluff his hand and that would disarm people because they're like, if you were really going to do that, would you actually bring that up, right? Like, if you're actually trying to manipulate me, why would you bring that up? And, and he has this conversation with Othello where him and Othello are talking and he's like, you know, you have to be careful about being jealous. You know, out of all these things, because he's, he's trying to whisper into Othello's ear that he may think, or that Desdemona and Cassio may be having some kind of affair. And, 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 and Iago is just saying, you know, you don't want to get jealous, all right? You don't want to look too much into it because once you get jealous, you're going to get mad. And then you're not going to think straight and, and things are going to go bad. And that's basically what his plan is. But he's telling Othello and warning him not to do this. And yet Othello falls for it at the end. And so you have to be careful about overcompensation. There's this thing in poker where they, they often say, when someone's playing a hand and, and you're looking at them across the table, it's often the opposite of how they're acting is what they have. So, oh, and again, this, this can work on multiple levels, but just on a basic level, right? When someone acts like they're, they're big, if someone sort of sits up in their chair, you know, they, they, they make their shoulders more, more rounded, chest out. They, they may kind of lean over into their cards as if they're looking, you know, with interest, you know. Uh, if, if they throw in their chips roughly into the middle of the hand, they, 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 they just act more aggressive. Oftentimes, that's a clue that their hand's pretty weak and it's an overcompensation for what they actually have. Likewise, you have to be careful because when the person is laid back and relaxed, they're leaning back in their chair, they're looking very non-aggressive, they're looking very friendly, they're, they're, they're joking around, they're just you know, having a good time, they, they put their chips in very, very carefully and quiet so they don't want anyone to notice, right? That's when you have to be careful because they're giving off this overcompensation of, I got nothing, don't worry about me, even though they're holding the, probably the best hand on, on the table. They're like, don't worry about me. They just want to be quiet. And so that's what we can take away from the story to prevent from being manipulated. Iago is very much overplaying his hand, not just with Othello, but with Desdemona as they're having a, a conversation. But he gets so close that, again, they, they think that he can't possibly be up to anything because he's a good guy. He is helping us, that he cannot be hurting us. And that is, uh, again, the, the, the mastery of manipulation. And just to be careful about those types of things. I really enjoyed reading Othello. You know, I had a great time. It took me not that long. I could read it in one sitting. And what's nice is that Othello is free if you just look online because it's public domain now. But it's an amazing story. You know, it, it's this war that's happening in the background and you have Othello and then you have this, this relationship between Othello and Desdemona. But Iago is the character that takes this story over. And, and in the end, I almost thought he was going to get away with it. You know, like it seemed to be going really well, except his wife was the one who kind of figured out what was going on. But he almost pulled it off. And all of this because he was passed over for a position. Those are my thoughts on Othello. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Bye.